everybody. Adam from Colorado Shooting Sports. We're going to talk about body armor. Um, it is October, and it's uh, time for things that go bump in the night, right? Well, the rig that I've got on right here is actually an excellent response to things that go bump in the night. We're going to talk about this specific setup here in a second, but first, body armor. Um, there's a couple different variations on the theme. You've got soft armor. Um, it's rated in levels. Level 1 stops at 22 and little tiny non-penetrating things. You're basically wearing a denim jacket at that point. The most common stuff you're going to see in the soft side of things is 3A. 3A is ready to stop 44 Magnum, which you're going to know you got shot by something, but it's better than it going in one side and out the other. Um, if you want to stop things that are rifle rated, we're going to be talking about plates. This is a level 4 steel plate. We have these here at the store. Um, it does have what's called an anti spall liner on it. Um, when you hit steel with a rifle round, what can happen is you get uh, pieces of the steel breaking off the back side due to the shock wave traveling through the metal. So if you've got just this on top of your t-shirt, obviously you're going to have pieces of metal embedded in you, which is kind of defeating the purpose of having body armor on in the first place. So we want to have a coating on there that's going to trap those pieces of metal and prevent them from entering your body. In the soft side of things, um, I like this rig particularly, um, again, for things that go bump in the night, because if I need to respond to a threat or a perceived threat very quickly, I can put this on, and in this I have basically everything I need. It's also handy if I'm going to use a long gun to respond, because here I have my primary, but I'm also equipped with my secondary and secondary mags right on my gear. So, just to kind of go through this thing real quick, I've got on this unit um, Glock Model 21 with an X300 uh, weapon light mounted. I chose this specifically because it's a huge gun with a pretty big light, and if that fits in this holster pouch, probably anything you've got is also going to fit, especially 9mm 40 caliber sized pistols. Um, I've also got magazines for my secondary right here on the rig, uh, two of those. I also have handheld flashlight. Um, even with a weapon mounted light, you're going to want to have a handheld available to you also. Come take our night fighting, low light fighting class and you'll understand why. We'll teach you how to use both, um, both techniques and both items to their full effectiveness. But there's going to be times where scanning for stuff, you do not want to have your weapon mounted light pointed at things that you care about. Also, if I'm responding to a perceived threat in my home, I should probably be calling for help. And this rig allows me to carry a cell phone right where I can get at it. And the cool part about having it up here high is even if I have to put it back in there after placing the call, it's close enough to me that I can speak into it and still be heard. So a couple of advantages. This also has Velcro where you can mount patches. Um, there are Velcro-backed ID holders, so you can put your ID, your driver's license, your concealed handgun permit in there, stuff like that. Um, this rig is very easy to get on and off. I do like that aspect of it. On this one, it's got storage on the back as well. And because you shouldn't be involved in anything tactical without tactical medical equipment, oops, upside down, I put one of our tactical medical kits in there, which again, take our TAC Med class, we'll teach you how to use all this stuff. But this way, it's accessible and available. So if you are injured or you need to treat somebody else, you can get hold of it. Um, I also, in the lower pocket on the rear, put a tourniquet. The cool part about this is with the lower pocket, it's positioned such that I can get my hands behind my back withdraw the tourniquet and get it onto my person. Um, this armor, as you can see, it covers my thoracic area in the front um, and my spine in the back. It only does cover core areas, vital organs, so a hit to an extremity can still be a life threat. And at that point, I can apply a tourniquet and kind of deal with things. If you don't like the rig with all the gear on it, I have another option, which is a pretty cool one, and that is this guy. Same basic configuration, but it's got what's called PALS webbing. It's a pocket attachment ladder system. It's one of those lovely military acronyms. Basically what it allows you to do is attach uh, molly style pouches to the rig. So you can make it more modular, set it up with different pouches, holsters, if you're gonna wear a belt holster or whatever. You wanna put rifle mag pouches on here, all that stuff is available to you. Or you can leave it slick and wear it discreetly under clothing, under a jacket, or if you have another chest rig for your rifle or shotgun, you can put this underneath that and have multiple layers of equipment. So. Um, the nice thing about this particular rig is if you're, you know, again, you hear the bad guy go bump in the night and all you've got on is your underoos, you can throw this thing on and it doesn't matter that you don't have pockets. All of your gear is on you and ready to go. So, a um, couple myths about body armor. One is civilians can't own it. That is wrong. As long as you're not a convicted felon, uh, it's a federal rule. If you're a felon, you cannot have body armor. But if you're a felon, you probably shouldn't be hanging out in a gun store anyway. Um, but everybody else here in Colorado, it's good to go. Um, we will definitely sell it to anybody who can come in here and, uh, and show us that they're not a felon, which generally speaking means um, if you've bought a gun from us for your alumni, stuff like that, we'll absolutely take care of you. Um, other myths, heavy, uncomfortable. It's not really a myth, it is kind of true. Body armor does weigh more than say a t-shirt, but it also stops bullets better. What we're looking at here is a, a balance between protection and mobility, just like armored warfare with tanks. You can have tons of armor, but you can't get out of your own way. At some point, you have gone too far. 
So what we want to do is balance the protection to the perceived threat. Um, most people don't expect to get shot with a rifle, so they're going to probably say, hey, I don't need rifle plates. Well, soft armor doesn't stop stab attacks. A knife or an ice pick will go right through it, whereas with steel plates, you now have stab protection as well. The plates are heavy, but holding them out at arm's length like so, they're going to feel heavier than when they're on your body over your center of gravity. Once you get the plates in the rig, it doesn't feel nearly as heavy, and it's actually pretty easy to move around with them still. We do like the smaller, lower profile rigs. Um, we don't sacrifice too much mobility. We don't make ourselves big and bulky and huge, so we still fit through doorways, things like that. But we've got good protection over the core uh, vital organs. Um, there are extreme levels of protection up to and including the giant EOD suits. Um, if you ever have a chance to ask Anthony how he feels about EOD suits, he's got a very strong opinion on the subject. I recommend it. Um, it's a good conversation. But the problem is, yes, you're basically indestructible, but you also can't move and you can barely breathe. So you've gone too far to one side because the perceived threat is getting blown up. With these, we're, we're being reasonable. We're looking at, okay, we've got a, a chance of being stabbed or shot by someone breaking into our house. How can we protect ourselves well? And these units provide an excellent, excellent level of protection for that. So if you want to come check out some really excellent body armor, come by the store. We're at 2435 8th Avenue, Unit A, Greeley, Colorado. You can reach us on the phone at 970-395-0664. Uh, the website's coloradoshootingsports.com or on Facebook at Colorado Shooting Sports. Thanks and have a great day.